breaking the thought patterns that we have with a sound so that then we focus our thoughts on the sound or even with breathing and slowly breathing in and breathing out very deeply and very slowly can just get our mind off our thinking. Some people's minds are like washing machines that just go round and round and round. They just can't turn it off. You know, they can't come to a place of rest. So sometimes people need something to distract them and to focus their thinking so that meditation becomes easier for them and engaging God becomes easier. I've been thinking about essential oils and there must be like, I've been thinking about the deeper spiritual significance of them and I've actually been having a look at it and it's really interesting. Um, and I was wondering, well, can I just read you a bit about what I was thinking? It's easier just to read what I wrote down while I was thinking about it. So I was thinking about them. I've been frequencies to help us and heal and connect. Mm. And I wondered about people like I have a friend who works at, at a place where they do, uh, where they, they have loads of essential oils and, she's, and the place stinks, but of, of whatever they've been doing. And the, the atmosphere is saturated with them, but it doesn't seem to like affect her in any way. And I thought, well, how doesn't it affect her? And I realized maybe certain things have to be mixed with faith and belief, things like frequencies can and do influence us in various degrees, whether we're aware of it or not. But maybe we can be protected from negative ones and more receptive to positive ones by faith. And by faith, we can choose to engage in the power of frequencies of the, or the effects of certain things to our physical benefit. However, we may be positively influenced without being aware of it as well. And then I thought about placebo medical trials and how people are not given the active drug, but they can be affected positively still and receive healing. And that demonstrates the power of our imagination mixed with belief or faith at working in our physical life, maybe. Like as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And he's calling things forth into this realm, aren't they? Aren't you? Things to be made manifest in the physical realm from the spiritual. Well, I wondered, and I was looking at um, some very interesting stuff about biblical um, oils. They give mm. got these chemicals in them called, well, I can't even say it, motor, mot monoterpenes and something mm. else. And they, they actually have the power to reprogram cells with correct information and deprogram miswritten DNA codes. So I thought that was fascinating. I wondered if you had any more like, insights on them or the power of them or, or anything. Um, well, I think you summed it up quite nicely. <laughs> 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 I'd like to do a bit of work myself and have a look, you know, yeah. and pray about it. Well, so. I, I, that, that's part of the the way our consciousness is designed to choose a reality that's aligned to God, God's heart is. And our intention and focus can work with things like oils and other frequencies to bring about change and to affect that change. Um, and I think people are looking at different ways of engaging that in the sort of quantum realm, the ether, that there's energy there that we can draw from that can bring energy to our bodies that can re, uh, repair them and recycle them in the cells. And but also the cells themselves have ca capacity to repair um, uh, and built in. And it's just the communication needs to be restored so that everything works together in harmony um, as it was intended. So de definitely, I think you'll find all sorts of different people are working in different aspects of the field. Uh, epigenetics is one, which is a, a programming to the genetic material, but not changing the genetic material, but sort of causing memory and uh, things to be passed on generationally um, or affecting the sort of present um all that is one aspect um and definitely when you're looking at um how we can live in health then seeing the balance between spirit soul body and the harmony that we can live in in rest effectively can bring about health um but our intention and focus is what is the most important thing. Yes, there are some frequencies in some oils that have an effect because they have um, sort of crossed the limbic system of the brain and they can affect you know, the way we think. 
Um, but when our intention, which people would call faith, is engaged yeah. with, then actually that brings about a powerful agreement. Mm. And when we're in agreement with how something works, then that agreement can be effectively outworked in a much more powerful way. Um, so, yeah, I, I think God is unveiling all sorts of different revelation to different people in different ways to reach as many people as possible so that as many people as possible can find uh, the health that God intended them to have um, and find healing and wholeness in every area, spirit, soul and body. Now, what um, essential oils and other things do with the limbic system can also release memory and toxic emotions um, that are trapped within the body, both within the physical and within the memory of the soul. Um, and those things can almost sort of surface because they're often buried um, within our subconscious and we don't necessarily always remember the actual event or what happened, but they can be toxic to us. Um, and when those are released and brought to the surface, um, which can be enhanced by essential oils doing that, then we can then see healing and wholeness come into those areas. So it's getting the balancing all of it. You know, a lot of people focus on the soul, inner healing and everything else, which is great. Um, but then don't think how that links to the body. And actually, there is a, a huge tie. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, medical professionals are looking at disease um, and realizing that so much of it is caused by emotional and mental issue, not just the physical. Some of it mm. is purely physical. But a lot of it has a component which is mental and emotional uh, and therefore toxic emotions and trauma and other things can have an effect on the physical body when they were are just memories of something that happened to us emotionally um, and sort of seeing things in a holistic way and looking at how we can operate holistically in it is really, really important. And I think what you find is that some people focus on one area of it, the body or the emotions, and we need to bring all of them together in a harm harmonious whole to actually see how all of it works together for uh, our health and wholeness. Um, and I think that's why it's worth looking at different ways of thinking around it and not just one area generally one person gets revelation about one area and they focus on that area and they don't always see that there are other areas involved as well so giving a broader look at the whole way of thinking about it will give you sort of some good things and it looks like you've done some good research there and are getting different ways of thinking about it but i do think in it all the intention is is the most important aspect to it yeah uh, i thought it might be yeah, yeah. because people aren't are unaffected by it mm. unless they believe it sometimes and sometimes yeah. people are effective whether they don't believe it it's interesting isn't it yeah mm. uh, and because there's a sense where some things have a physical effect on the body um and some essential oils carry frequency that when absorbed or breathed can have a positive impact because they bring that frequency that counteracts negative frequencies that might be operating but when we add our intention to it then you then have agreement and when there's agreement that brings an exponential increase in the effect of something yeah and i think uh you can focus that agreement that intention uh, and that works whether you use the oil or not yeah you know, i use frequencies in bowls crystal bowls to focus intention to touch the body which wasn't absorbed in a way it just you have a sound bath uh, you know if you're surrounded by sound but the but the sound contains the intention that is desired then that actually can have an effect on your body without even touching you physically if you do put the bowls on your body you know I've, i had a sound bath a friend of mine did a sound bath and they put these bowls on my back small 
rather than the big crystal bowls, they use small sort of Tibetan singham bowls, which are sort of brass, I think. And they put them on my back. And as soon as he actually touched one of them, I literally was just gone into a deep state without, uh, you know, I wasn't even thinking about it. It just like, woo, it was like, whew. So I went into this deep state. Um, so I think, you know, there is a powerful uh, way of engaging it. But if you are intentionally active in it, you're more like, I wasn't closed to what the sand bath to do. I was open to what it did. I wasn't sure what it was going to do because I didn't particularly need anything, but I was open to it. And I went into an encounter that that opened up for me. Um, and that experience was very, very positive one. But when you do it intentionally for healing or for wholeness, then you're adding to it. You could say your faith to it. And I think some people who take the placebos in a medical trial, they are engaging in hope and when they mix their desire with that potential hope then that in itself can have a positive effect on the body yeah uh, and i think alongside that the attitude of thanksgiving and gratitude and living in that state of joy and peace can also help the immune system uh, fight off things and keep us in balance as well because when our emotions are out of sync with our desire then we're at discord and it's important to have a coherence and you have a group called heart math and they do things on healing and wholeness and they they use coherence and how having our thinking coherent with our emotions can bring about health and wholeness so it's quite a a big field that people are discovering and exploring and i think it's there's a lot of really good positive things out there to find the key is don't buy everything everyone says yeah just go with what is an alignment with what you know is to be the heart of god and love and don't make it a formula yeah engage in it relationally with god so if I was going to engage that God is my healer, he may use various things to affect that healing, but he is my healer. I'm not just going to put my trust in a technique which separates myself from the relationship that I have with him as my healer. And so that's why I think when people know God as father and they know God's desire for a blessing and they know God's desire for healing, then that is really really powerfully effective rather than trying to work a technique uh, and yeah. some people divorce the techniques which i'm not saying they don't work but they're much more effective when you're engaged with the healer not just with the method of healing um, and i always want to make sure i'm draw connected to god as the source of my healing not just some oil or frequency or you know rife frequency because there's lots of things out there i'm going to engage it through god as father rather than an independent way of doing it yeah it's doing it from that from that first from relationship first because yeah. the new age has got a real um you know they're obsessed with it aren't they body body spirit yeah. fairs or something and they're, yeah. they're 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 already into the effects but they don't they don't have god i mean they don't even you know realize Oh, no they're um, very open to that stuff well they are and i think when we then engage them we can engage them positively mm -hmm. without trying to undermine what they're doing but introduce them to the source that's behind what they're doing so that they can find a relationship and have peace because what i've found is many people in the new age are not at peace they're seeking for something they're looking for something mm -hmm. they're going after something but they're not at peace and only peace you can really get that will bring you into a state of rest is the peace that God gives you. The yeah. peace of knowing that you're loved unconditionally and accepted that brings you into that state of acceptance. Whereas what I've found is a lot of new age people, they're seeking acceptance. They've probably been rejected by church and been rejected by Christians because of what they were looking into. Actually 
they need to find acceptance in God and we can help them by not judging them and not trying to tell them where they're going wrong but help them find what is behind what they're actually doing. Now, I'm not talking about clairvoyance and all of that sort of dark mm. stuff, but the healing modalities that you'll find in Reiki healing and other healing modalities, sound, light healing, whatever. You know, there's a source of energy and power behind that, which is coming out of the, the life of God, which we can help them discern what that is by introducing them to that source. Mm. Um, unfortunately a lot of christians tend to be really negative wow. against the new age god loves all people as his children they're seeking something and probably have been put off from finding god by christians who've basically put off that side of their spirituality and told them that they're into the occult and they're doing all this wrong stuff you know and therefore they got chucked out oh, yeah, the they... baby got thrown out with the bath well, <laughs> or reject god because christians are rejecting them we yeah. need to help them discover the true source of health and wholeness which is behind what they're probably seeking for but they've not found the peace in god you know and i found in talking to people in the new age who were seeking experience a lot of them never really had the genuine experience they were seeking it because they were open to a spirituality but most of them haven't really had it some of them have but most of them haven't and when i was describing some of my experiences to them and what how i did it and how i was connected to god as source and as my father and other things they very much um were interested you know because they wanted something genuine um so let's help them you know, let's help them yeah. find the genuine and help them find God in it, you know, rather than basically alienating them all the time. Anyway, definitely. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. OK. Anyone else got something they want to share or add or talk about? Yes. Um. Do you do uh, you used to do this? Um, bowls what do you call them crystal bowls yeah crystal bowls yeah are you still doing them do you do them i've got one here in in my office yeah why don't you do one with us <laughs> i love their bowls they sound yeah. amazing I, don't I, they? I, I, <laughs> there's there's something i use to help other people generally oh, when, I, when i was using them you know mm. back uh i mean i haven't got a big enough office here to have this the the seven big bowls that i've got mm. um the colored ones um there's not enough room so i just got one smaller one that i occasionally use if i want to help someone focus or in meditation the sound if you if you engage the sound the sound can bring you into a place where you're at rest um yeah so i do use it that way occasionally but i i i never really used it particularly for myself um so if you were to use them for yeah. us as a group what would you be using it for what would well you be I, helping us with well it especially depends. us it depends entirely really what people need so i could use it to release a healing frequency again it's my intention you know when i play the sound the sound carries my intention and if my intention is for you to experience peace or rest or joy or love or healing, then my intention is carried. And if you receive that intention and agree with it and come into agreement for whatever it is I'm releasing, then yeah. that begins to engage and touch you. And you can use it in meditation just to focus your thinking and your mind on the sound or you can use breathing techniques alongside it or independently of it just to actually get your mind focused. A lot of people struggle getting their mind to stop going round and round and round and round and thinking of stuff all the time. And when it comes to meditation, you're fixing your thoughts on God to engage with God. And if there are lots of other thoughts going around, it can make it really quite difficult. So sometimes breaking the thought patterns that we have with a sound 
so that then we focus our thoughts on the sound or even with breathing and slowly breathing in and breathing out very deeply and very slowly can just get our mind off our thinking. Some people's minds are like washing machines that just go round and round and round. They just can't turn it off. You know, they can't come to a place of rest. So sometimes people need something to distract them and to focus their thinking so that meditation becomes easier for them and engaging God becomes easier. So, you know, I've used it in lots of different ways, you know, and I've used it in activations. Um, it's not as easy in an activation when you're on the other end of a, a you know, a computer and a microphone. And sometimes you don't feel quite the same as what I'm feeling if I'm playing it in the room. But my intention's the same. You know, and sometimes, you know, it can be quite distorted when you're trying to record it, which is not always the best. Um, but I've used it in in groups of people to focus a healing intention so that they would receive healing. And, okay. and actually, when I first started using the bowls, you know, we had a group of people who were interested to try them out and we just practiced intention. And so we went around the room and each person would play the bowl. I, I showed how to do it. And then I encouraged each person to focus their intention on a word. And then play the bowl and release the word through the bowl. And then the rest of us would just receive what word they released. And it really was quite amazing. One person got every single word, <laughs> you know, spot on. Others got the impression of the word. So let's say the word was peace. Some people would feel calm. Some people would feel different words of describing a peaceful rest or other words. They felt the, they felt the intention uh, in a way that they related to with a particular word. Um, some would say tranquil. You know, I felt restful, you know, but pe mo most people got it, you know. And so, you know, then we started to use that um, in helping people uh, in releasing those sounds over people. Okay. Um, but, yeah, unfortunately, I don't have enough room for all the six big bowls in, in my little room here. Um, but I do have the one I brought with me, which I. Yeah, I have, I have heard you play it in. Yeah. In the engaging God course, so I was just thinking, thought that maybe you still do activations in groups sometimes if they be need. Well, but I have, since you, you know, said, I have done it on the on the Patreon group. I've used them sometimes in the activations, but it can, you know, for some white people might find it helpful, and some people might find it distracting. You know, the first time I played it to someone one person was like oh that's really piercing you know because actually it was hitting against something in their mind so it felt quite uncomfortable okay. another person was like wow that's amazing you know they yeah. so it, you know not everyone experiences the sound or the frequency or the intention the same way okay. um so you know uh, and you know sometimes it made the recordings quite difficult to hear what was going on so so i don't do it that often in recordings being recorded for another group so yeah okay all right okay who's got something else well are, are those are those crystals the same as crystal bowls you know people use crystals don't yeah. they and you can buy them in the hippie shops you know like um different yeah, ones i've got, different I've things, got a basket you know? full of crystals up there oh, someone yeah, I don't, I don't know gave me all of these crystals <laughs> and sometimes again the crystals carry a frequency mm -hmm. that if you place on a part of the body mm. then certain crystals have certain types of frequency for certain purposes and mm. you can use them in the same way to focus intention in the energy that those crystals are giving off. 
um you know mm. i've got some quartz and rose quartz and lapis lazuli and other other you know, i mean they're beautiful things i like crystals yeah they're pretty but again it's the source mm. you know don't separate a crystal from the creator of the crystal who's imparted into the crystal a source of energy that we can engage with but don't do it independently of the creator and that's part of the problem that people use oh i'm using these crystals they've got energy uh they've mm. got no idea where the energy comes from or how it works but you can engage with god who created crystals i mean you know look at the high priest breastplate had 12 crystals mm. on it then you had the umin and the thurman thing which basically gave them a clue yes and no answers from god so you know it's in the bible you know, yeah definitely. i mean yeah. there's a book there's a book on crystals a uh, biblical book with all the uses of crystals and frequencies and things in the bible to say look this is a very biblical thing but of course people don't take it that way you know the, they sort of hear the oh it's all new age and weird you know well it is a little bit weird if you're not used to it but actually it's quite scientifically based as well things vibrate at a particular frequency you know and therefore those things can have a particular use and purpose you know now again i don't use them for myself but we did use them in a, in our meditation room um when people could take a crystal or place it in their hand or sit reflectively or place that on them um because it seems that certain crystals have certain effects or frequencies that can be useful in different things i'm not an expert in it because i've never really used it for myself um but i'm i believe god can use those things just like he can use a piece of technology that generates a frequency as in a rife machine and then you can focus that frequency um you know. well it'd be the same for the healing cloths they used in the bible when there was it yeah. peter and oh somebody yeah paul, yeah, paul. The cloths yeah. or something and they healed yeah. people yeah paul, um, yeah paul laid his hands on a piece mm. of material an apron oh, a handkerchief they then took that piece of cloth and laid it on a person mm. and that person got healed or delivered um so what was why how did it work yeah, you know I mean, christians it. don't have a problem <laughs> with the bible saying it works but they don't know most of them don't have a clue how it works they sort of almost think well it's just magic a little bit you know, <laughs> yeah. it's all, you know that's the sort of mindset that you can get into well healing is a bit like oh we don't know how it works but it works sort of things and we don't know how that works but actually you can impart into something an intention frequency and then when that's put on someone else that frequency can get released mm -hmm. you know and there's nothing there's nothing unbiblical about it at all it's there in the bible um, just as soon as you start to break it down scientifically or start to actually apply that and uh, then people get a bit spooked as if well that was okay for the bible but we shouldn't do that stuff today you know well paul did it why shouldn't we do it and jesus did things all the time you know it's like hey you know there's more to these things i mean how are they doing it when they pray for healing are they hoping for the best or are they laying hands on people? What do they think happens when you lay hands on somebody? What do we, What is the anointing of the spirit? Why does it produce heat or vibration or energy in your hand? Because it carries with it life, carries with it frequency, a power, if you, if you like, to affect healing. You know, and most christians wouldn't have a problem with well jesus laid hands on the sick and they recovered and he told us to lay hands on the sick and they would recover it's just a different way of doing that um you know so it's all it's all good and i think god is unveiling lots of different ways of thinking about it and so we can engage it yeah okay all right uh Brenda. Think... yeah okay so okay we'll come back in a minute sir yeah, Brenda, you got your hand up there. I do. And, and I'm kind of switch, switching gears a little bit here, if it's all right. Yep. Yesterday, um, in the little group that I'm a part of, um, just in us sharing together, it's like 
each of us are feeling, it's, it's more the feeling, but I really think that it's where we're at in our journeys that we're in this gap position <laughs> where like almost like you're in a hole, <laughs> you know, it, sometimes it feels like a dark place. Um, it, and then, you know, I kind of went to the intercessory standing in the gap. Does that fit in? Um, but it's, you know you're moving from one system to another. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's moves. There's all. My house got sold. Well, I, I didn't even have it listed. I was in Austria, and I got a text. Someone wanted to buy my house. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I don't even know where I'm going. You know, it's that yeah. type of a thing where you know that you're it's part of your journey. It's exciting. And there's an adventure in the mystery and in, in being able to embrace that. But um, I don't know. It was just interesting because every one of us feeling like that and also the purposes, you know, where are you going? Being very unclear right now. And yet being able to find the peace and the shalom in the midst of that and uh, and still have joy, <laughs> you know, being able yeah. to sleep at night, that sort of thing. So I'm just throwing that out to you. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I think for a lot of people. Coming to a place of rest is what God really wants us to do. And then from a place of rest, everything else can come out of that place of rest. And when you're in a place of rest, things begin to happen around you, things to begin to outwork around you because you're not trying to work it. You're not trying to make it happen. You're trusting in God's provision and blessing and protection and guidance, you know, in in that situation. And in a group dynamic. God wants the group to come to a place of rest in relationship with him and each other then if there is a mandate for a group for a particular purpose again that is much easier to hear when everyone's resting and not striving and not seeking their own agenda so there was another group that um has met for probably about four years and they've been meeting to ascend together and engage together but with no agenda or and they didn't have an identity other than the time that they met, which was noon. So they call it the noon group, you know. Um, so there was that sense. But then they they all felt that God was drawing them to think about what is our identity? Who are we? We know who we are individually, as children, but is there an identity for the group? And there was. And as they they came and they asked, you know, can we can we do an ascension to find out? And I'm like, yeah, you can, but you, you don't need me to do it, you know, and because uh, essentially they were ascending every time they met. So they didn't need me to facilitate that for them. So I did give them some ways of thinking about what you do if you are seeking God for clarity about what the group's purpose is or what's the identity of the group. Because the identity comes first, which gives a, a blueprint and a mandate. So if you are, let's say, as a group, you are a fellowship group or in this thing, are, where are they an ecclesia? What is an ecclesia? Ecclesia carries some sort of governmental aspect to it as, below, as well as the relational. But what for? You know, and there the questions that you begin to ask, then you can go to God and ask him for revelation and clarity to give us, well, what are we? Are we an ecclesia? And sometimes as soon as you say we're an ecclesia and people think, oh, church, well, I'm not sure I want to be that because they're thinking of the old model. You know, so they're thinking of, oh, well, we've got to do this every Sunday and we've got to do this. And then we've got to have, oh, and there's notices and then there's all that, you know, it, you end up and you end up sort of like, oh, there's this model. I'm not sure I want that. And so we've got to be careful we don't frame words with our ideas of what they mean, but allow God to unveil what he means about the identity of a group and its blueprint and mandate. 
you know so and i think once you come to rest it's much easier to be able to hear god speak about that sort of stuff one thing that came out too is you know it's always been you know god and me you know centered around me and it was like yesterday it was the revelation of the us, us. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the beauty of us and um so that was good. You know, everything's good. Uh, yeah. it, it's just, you know, just traveling a path that I haven't traveled before. Plus, mm. I, I looked, I looked at, I'm trying to downsize. Mm. I looked at this huge five bedroom house with 10 foot ceilings yesterday. And I can't quite let go of it. <laughs> and it's like completely overwhelming mm. in the next town for like crazy cheap mm. <laughs> solid so it's like you know the possibilities there's just possibilities like mm. everywhere i look there's possibilities and and it's just so wonderful and exciting because uh, uh, the adventure of everything so yeah yeah and and the adventure of it is when we begin to trust in the journey rather than dictating where are we going too many people look at the destination and they actually miss the fact that the journey is the important part, you know, and ultimately in a group dynamic, um, we are all individuals and we're all, you know, have our own, in a sense, blueprints and mandates for our own lives. But when we come together, there's something special when that begins to connect relationally uh, you know, from my past experience, people want the function before they've got the form and they don't want to spend time building the relationship that enables the function to be released. Um, and we're sort of conditioned a little bit that way. Well, what are we going to do? You know, what's our purpose when it sounds like you and I think God is drawing other groups into? Well, no, the relationship is what is the foundation and the purpose will come out of the relationship and discovering it is an, is, um, an adventure in that you're probably going to go further than what you it would even imagine or thought at the beginning. And if you'd sort of put an identity on it at the beginning, you would have had a lesser identity than what it is now when you're in a place to be able to seek God for where you are now, because you've all grown and you've all matured. So you're all in a different place than where you would have been before, you know, which is, you know, part of trusting God and walking with him one step at a time and not racing ahead or looking ahead. So many people are walking with God and rather than looking at God, they're looking ahead. And they're missing the fact that the, the relationship and the intimacy is right there with them, you know, right there with them rather than always looking 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 and you're missing what you've got you know let's enjoy what we have and out of what we have more will come you know which is which is awesome you know it really is uh powerful when when you're on a journey and it becomes a this sort of adventure and you know what's coming next and you know it's great you know it's certainly not boring i was just going to say that when you were explaining about the healing frequencies and when uh, people are praying for each other, what are they doing? I think that's the bit. Mm. The church don't understand what they're doing. I think they don't have an explanation like you just did to say they've done this for so long. They just know that, that they can just lay hands. But the scientific of it all, what's the word for it, the prophetics mm. or the explanation of what exactly mm. God is doing. Like you're saying, then you, when you go into breaking that down, that's when they start thinking that it's weird mm. for you to be, yeah. to be doing that, which I think is a disadvantage that, has, that the church has had, that they just are doing this thing without full understanding they just read the scripture, lay your hands, and they do that. But yeah. deep, dig deep into 
So when I'm laying my hands, what am I doing? What is that that I am doing? What yeah. is that yeah. that is affecting or affecting yeah. healing in this person? What am I transferring to this person mm. and how? Yeah. And that's what I just wanted to say when you yeah, were talking sure. about that. Yeah, and, and I think if it works, great. You know, and there's a simplicity about just just trusting and laying hands on someone and trusting God will heal them. You know, and there's a simplicity about that. And for some people, that's great. And that's all they need. It's when it doesn't work. And when it becomes more complicated, then helping uh, to have an understanding of how it works why, and why it might not work yeah. also comes into play, which can be helpful then in yeah. moving forward in, into in healing or any other area, area like that. Um, so for some people, simple, oh, yeah, this is what it says. I'll just do it. It's great. And that might be what they do all their life. And that's wonderful. But sometimes it might require some greater thing. And for some people, learning to do that it's not as easy as others you know i've got a friend who just she i say well how do you do that well i don't know i just do it i said well that's not very helpful for me if i want to know how to do it is it you know but she doesn't know how to describe what she's doing she just does it and it works but for me i like to know because when someone asks me how do you do it i don't want to say to them well you just do it it just sort of works you know i don't really know i don't really understand yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, because yeah. I'm wired differently yeah. because I like to be able to give someone an explanation to might be able to help them understand in a way that enables them to do something when yeah. just telling someone, well, it just works. I don't know how I do it. It just happens. Some people would find, oh, great. I'll just do that then and it will work. Others will be. Yeah, but how? You know, and they'll be asked, well, how? I don't know how. I I can't just do it. It just doesn't work for me. Then there are different ways of helping people. Do it. it doesn't work for in one way to find how it works better in another way so that they can learn and do it themselves. I mean, Jesus did teach his disciples how to do stuff. You know, he didn't just do it. He actually did teach them how to do it. You know, and for that, you know, we don't know the, the private conversations he had and probably all the questions they had and, you know, him having to go into the explanation and, uh, you know, helping them understand what it meant, whatever. Yeah, you know, we don't have all the details of that because then we would probably then try and use a formula to do it rather than the relationship that we have with God that helps us do it. You know, I we need the power of the Holy Spirit flowing through us, the anointing or whatever you want to call it, the energy, the frequency, the life to be able to impart. You know, and if you boil it down to a pure formula of this is what you do, you lay hands, you pray in tongues, you do this, you do that, you do this, this is what works. And it doesn't work. What are you going to do then? Because you don't understand how it might work or what might stop it working. Therefore, you're stuck. So having a broader perspective, I think, is, is helpful. You know, uh, and, you know, the disciples, they did do the things that Jesus did. You know, I, you know, when Peter went to the, the gate and said, well, silver and gold, I don't have to give you, but I give you this. Well, he knew how to give it, give it them. You know, and they got up healed. Well, they'd seen Jesus doing that with many people, I'm sure. And something about reaching out and holding their hand or receiving helped the person experience healing. You know, um, fortunately, we don't have all the details. And I'm glad we don't have all the details. Because if we had all the details, we would make a manual of this is what you have to do rather than a relationship in which we can learn what to do from him directly individually and uniquely so we don't all have to do the same thing the same way all the time i've just been thinking about jesus laying in the tomb and what was happening in his body 
<laughs> for three days where it looked like it was dead. Mm. You know? And yet his body was like reconfiguring, <laughs> being transfigured, mm. becoming alive. And I, I guess I was kind of relating that a little bit to this gap is that kind of where we have experiences like that, where it looks like everything around you is dead. Mm. And yet there is something, there's a power, you know, God's, and, and I may be just like flowering mm. this all up, but mm. I, I like to sit in the thoughts. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I think sometimes we need an end of something for the beginning of something else. And that's when off sometimes it feels like it's dark. Oh, this isn't working anymore. What? Well, why isn't it working? You know, and you feel because actually what God is wanting is you to move from one old way of doing something into something new. And often if the old way of doing it keeps working, there's no incentive to embrace the new. So often it feels like, well, why isn't this working? What's going on? Because God has got something new that he wants to you to embrace. And therefore, it feels like there's a gap or it feels like, well, what's going on? But actually, you're absolutely right. God is at work in it so that you can find what is new rather than staying with the old. And often what people do who've been used to doing something a particular way and it seems that it's not working, they try harder and they push it. And they often do it in the flesh and they do it with their own effort and their own strength. And what they're not realizing is God doesn't want them to do it that way anymore because he's got something new for them. But they're not able to rest in the gap. Some people really don't like quiet. It's got to be noise. It's got to be activity. Something's got to be going on. And that is the problem with not being at rest is you need the activity and if the activity is one that god wants to be to change you keep trying to do the activity because that is your comfort zone and when you're comfortable you know and actually it's uncomfortable when things stop working and things haven't yet discovered how new things work yeah and that was the tra tra actually the transition out of the old covenant into the new it didn't just end. There was a 40 year period of transition where both were in place. And that caused quite a lot of confusion and quite a lot of difficulty, but it allowed people to come out of the old thing, which was fading away, becoming obsolete, as it says in Hebrews, to embrace the new covenant, which was a new, completely different revelation and experience. And some never came out of the old. They tried to make the old work. Paul was one of them trying to make the old work when Jesus was trying to show him a new way. And it wasn't until he was, you know, on the Damascus road in the light that God revealed Jesus was in him. You know, and that revelation transformed his life. But he had to abandon the old way of doing it to embrace the new way you couldn't keep going with law and works as opposed to grace so his whole message was one of grace and the finished work of jesus rather than law but he had to explain to a whole lot of people why this isn't working anymore and some of them were pressured into going back to a system that or going to a system they never had in the first place by those who wanted to maintain the law of Moses alongside the grace of Jesus. Well, you can't mix covenants. And during that 40 year period, there was this sort of mixture of old and new. Until eventually the old completely came to an end. And even then people are still today trying to mix old and new. You know, that uh, because it's what happens with a religious spirit it wants you to operate in a way which is based in a system um and mixing systems just creates a mess you know uh, well you know you want hot water you want cold water you don't want warm water 
warm water is not pleasant to drink you know if you like hot drinks great if you like cold drinks but warm drinks are really not very nice and i think it's just figuratively of look don't try and keep this old thing going embrace the new um but it's not that easy you know when you're in the gap because it feels uncomfortable it feels a little bit well, why? What's going on? This this is sort of not not feeling good anymore. Well, that's because God wants us to embrace something new. You know, there's always a beyond. You know, in Ephesians 3, where it says, you know, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond what you can ask or think. You know, if you kept going at the what was before, you'd never go beyond into what is then. You know, which is why I think it, it's supposed to be uncomfortable in there. But you can be at rest. Even in when something doesn't work anymore or where things are changing and transitioning, you can still be at rest in it. Although it's not easy. Because there are questions, you know, and there are feelings and there are sort of mm, uncomfortableness. And it's a little bit like, you know, um, it, and, you know, ultimately, you can't stay in a state of immaturity forever. We've got to mature. You know, it's like what happens when the birds in a nest get to the point where they need to learn to fly? Well, the mother boots them out of the nest generally. You know, they're sort of encouraged with the right footed encouragement to get out, you know, and fly. And they won't ever fly if they stay in the nest. So sometimes the nest has to be a place of, oh, you've got to get out of the nest now, not stay here. And the parents often feed the birds, the little birds. You know, we I like watching the birds in the garden and we got bird feeders and I made some bird tables and things. And I like watching what goes on and the little birds start chirping and the parents are there and they come and feed them for, you know, for a while after they've gone out of the nest. But after a while, they stop. And it's like, I've seen the adult birds, we've got blue tits and blackbirds and they do it all. And they go to the bird table and they sit on the bird table, encouraging the fledgling to come onto the table. And their fledgling is still there like, feed me, feed me. Ah, opening its mouth, wanting to feed it. And the, the parents don't do it anymore. Because the food is right there in front of them. They just got to peck at it and eat it for themselves rather than re relying on the parent to do it. So there's a sense of growth in which I think God orchestrates those periods where things are sort of not working as well, or there's a gap, or it feels a little bit like, oh, I don't know where I am, or, you know, a hole, as you described it, um, so that we won't want to stay there. No, <laughs> that's all good. Though. Yes, I, want, I was going to leave it, but I'm going to ask it anyway. <laughs> So, with immortality, what stages in your life have you noticed have started to embrace this, or, if, or is this the word embrace or to change towards immortality? Since you are the guru of immortality. <laughs> well, I'm sort of, yeah, it's a subject which is becoming quite widespread. And more and more people are beginning to engage it. Mm -hmm. I think the key to it is you can't just be passive, hoping that you're immortal. Okay. It says that the mortal puts on immortality. Okay. So there's a sense of, well, what do we do to put it on or be clothed by immortality? And that it requires our thinking to align with immortality so no fear in our thinking no align to aging and death as of inevitability no align to time running out all the negatives you know we have to think of you can't embrace immortality without thinking about the effects of death because death is overcome with life you know, it's swallowed up in life. So we've got to actually address what is our thinking which needs to change 
which has been aligned to death or the inevitability of it, because most of us have been brought up with that inevitability. And in Christian circles, death is seen as a promotion because you get promoted right, yeah. and you get the good stuff. Yes. But we've got to break that mindset and, and I make hate that mindset. Connected to that mindset I so that it. we can actually embrace, well, why does God want me to be immortal? Yeah. Why has he made me immortal? And how can I clothe myself with his intention for me, which means how do I draw from the right source? Because most people die because they run out of life. Because it's, it's almost like yes. you're born with, a, with an amount of life yeah. within a container of your body. There's yeah. an amount of life. Mm. But as you get older, you're running down that amount of life until eventually there's no life left and you die because mm. you're only drawing from the natural source of life that's within your mortal body but if mm. you're drawing from an energy source which is beyond that energy that you have just within your body and you're drinking from living water as an energy source which is a fountain which is supplying you eternal life then you're not going to run out of energy because it's a constant supply of energy which is not container that you had when you were born so we've got to change the source to draw on immortal energy the energy of god the life of god the spirit all sorts of ways of looking at it drinking living water so that rivers, rivers of living water are flowing in us. It's like we were born with a tank. And we're drinking from the tank until there's no tank left, nothing in the tank, and the tank's empty, we die. But if we continually be filled with a flow of life which is coming from beyond the tank, then our tank never needs to actually run out. But it's the source and we've got to turn to the source. Jesus said, anyone who's thirsty, come to me and drink. Think of thirst being running out of life. We need to turn to a source of eternal life. And immortality is not just not dying. It's living a quality of life, which is the abundant life that Jesus would promised. I don't think most people would want to live forever in the state that they're currently in. That's right, yeah. They don't want that, but they don't know how to do it. And they're out to change it. You know, it's like, no, we need to find the abundance of life so that that life is a joy to live. And we don't want to die. Because this life is so good. Why yeah, would I want to miss out on more of this life? But a lot of people, the quality of their life is not there. Therefore, they see life as something eventually, well, I'm going to get a promotion and then I'll get the good stuff when I die. Because they don't have the abundance now. So we need to ensure that we have the abundance of life, which is love and joy and peace and everything that god intends us to have you know and not be robbed killed or destroyed by the lack of which is the enemy will deceive us into believing that we will inevitably yeah, die yes. so there's a sense where our mind needs to be renewed to a different way of thinking about it but our being needs to be focused on drawing from a different source so we are actively clothing ourselves in immortality or drinking from the right source because we we know that we do not have what it takes within our own self to maintain life forever there's a limitation on what we can draw from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil if you like um, we need to draw from the tree of life and that source the tree of life will never run out so there is stuff to think about, you know, um, in changing thinking, turning our attention to a different source and then drinking from that source.
If you enjoy these videos, would you please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe? It really does help. Thank you very much.